I greet you in Jesus' precious name. It's wonderful to be with you again on the program. I just love speaking to you, and I hope you enjoy listening to me. <laughs> but before we start, we're going to pray. Father, I just pray that you'd watch over the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, please, if you could ch uh, turn to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 22. Understanding, that's like wisdom, eh? Understanding is a wellspring of life to him who has it. Understanding. We need knowledge. We really do, folks. The last part I haven't read to you, and this is what it says, but the correction of fools is folly. In other words, to try and correct or teach someone who is not interested is a waste of time, and it's so sad. You say, well, that's what young people are like. Not all young people. Let me tell you, I've met some young people who are very intelligent and very soft and are prepared to learn. And some of the hardest people I have to speak to are old people, my age and older, who think they know everything and they haven't even met Jesus yet. So there's no fool like an old fool, <laughs> as they say. But understanding is a wellspring of life to him who has it. And then we go to the, second, uh, to the book of Jeremiah chapter 2, the second chapter, and one verse, verse 13. For my people have committed two evils, the Lord says. For they have forsaken me. Okay, that's the foolish ones. We don't need God. We're quite capable of doing things ourselves. Very foolish. Okay, number one. They have forsaken me. Listen to this. The fountain of living waters and hewn themselves cisterns. Okay, that's a collecting place. Okay. Broken cisterns that cannot, can hold no water. So they have forsaken me, the spring of life, wellspring of life, for a broken cistern which just keeps leaking and it can't hold any water. Exchanging fountains of living water for broken cisterns, which are very short-lived. You know, folks, if there's one thing you and I need to do in these last days is we need to look after the wellspring of our life. We need to look after our spirit man. We need to look after our heart so that it doesn't become hard, judgmental, angry, full of hate, self-centered. We need to make sure that we constantly guard our hearts. I want to tell you about a gentleman who I esteem greatly. I haven't seen him for years. I don't even know if he's alive. This man came to Great Town with his wife and his children, and he worked for World Vision, that big organization, and his sole purpose was to go down into the low felt, as we call it here. We are farming on the high felt, the high ground, down to the low ground, which is a semi-arid area. When it does rain, the grass is beautifully sweet for cattle. But if there's a drought at a time, and which often happens there, then there's nothing. It's like a desert. There's just thorn trees. There's no grass. And the cattle and the goats and the sheep and the donkeys, they struggle. It's what we call the homelands. We call it the Hlanzen. It's a Zulu word. It's the area where, where um, there is very little water. Now, this gentleman, I'm not going to name him because he wouldn't like it. He's that type of guy. He was a very humble man. He used to be a part of our church, and he would always be the one that would sit at the back. He wouldn't say much. 
Nobody knew too much about him, but every Monday morning he would get in his pickup and he would drive for miles down into these desolate areas. And all he did, his sole job was, he would go and he would look for broken cisterns, broken springs. He'd find a damp area, like a muddy area, where the cattle would be uh, stamping around looking for water. But there was no water, just mud. And the first thing he would do, he'd put a fence. He'd do it himself, a strong barbed wire, five-strand fence around this muddy area. Okay? So he'd fence it off. And then he would go with his shovel, and he would slowly unpick and slowly start to scrape away all the mud, all the dry ground, and until eventually he found the eye of the spring. And it's very small. I've done it myself on this very farm. We had no water on this farm when I arrived. Nothing. This was a big overgrown maize field. That's all it was. But there was one damp spot just below my house. And I did exactly the same thing. Slowly start to dig away all the mud. Bank it up. And eventually a little, it's so special to see, a little trickle of water would come out of the dry land. It was a spring. It was a fountain. Then what he would do, he would coax the fountain. He would encourage the fountain. You see, folks, that fountain I'm talking about is your heart. And I want to say to moms and dads, do not close the fountain in your child's life by harsh words, by rebuking them, by telling them you'll never amount to anything. They won't forget that. I tell you my story time and time again. The headmaster told my mother, take him out of school because he won't do much more in school. I've never forgotten that. I've forgiven my headmaster. <laughs> and I hope to see him in heaven one day and I'll shake his hand and I'll ask him how many books he wrote. Now, that's been nasty, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, Lord. But folks, that stuck with me. And I was under the impression that I would never make anything of my life. And my mom listened to the headmaster and she took me out of school. And that was the start of my journey. But God had other plans for me. See? Coming back to the story. And so, the little spring... Because it's been nurtured now. And that's all this gentleman did, by the way. And he'd come home up here and he'd he slip somewhere in Great Town. Then he'd go down the next day and he'd carry on. And eventually the spring started to flow quite strongly because it wasn't being restricted by the animals trying to get a drop of water. And then what he would do, he'd make like a basin out of cement. A nice wide basin out of cement. Okay, not a broken cistern, no, no, a brand new one. And, the, and he would have a, a little pipe that would come and capture the eye of the spring and direct it into the basin. Okay? The basin would then fill up. He would take a plastic pipe, probably about maybe 10 meters long, and he would put the, 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 the opening of the pipe into the basin and cement it in on a low spot. And then the water would start to run down the pipe, okay? And then what he would do at the end of the pipe, he would put a water trough with a ball valve. You know, young children, like you got in the toilet, when you flush the toilet, what happens? It fills up again. Same principle. And that, that uh, water trough would be secured in the ground so it couldn't be pushed over or knocked by animals. And it would fill up with beautiful, fresh, delicious, sweet water. And all the cattle and the goats and all the sheep from round about would come and they'd be able to drink fresh, clean water. That was all he did. Nothing else. And I tell you what, that man, I think, did more good for those communities than any money that was poured in and wasted. But it takes a lot of preparation. It takes a lot of discipline. Now, if you go to Israel, like I do, I've been to Israel many, many times, starting in the year 2003, on average twice a year, 
It's a very special and beautiful place. But Israel on its own is dry, it's hot, it's arid, it's a desert-like place. But there is a spring, that's right, and it's right up in the north close to Mount Hermon, which has got snow on the top of it. Can you believe that? When Israel's like got 40 degrees there on average, the heat there. I mean, in the, by the Dead Sea in that uh, desert there, it goes up to 50 degrees. People can't even live there. There's no grass or anything. But there is one river. Yes, come on, what is it? That's right, it's the Jordan River. One river that flows from the top of Israel right down to the bottom. But there are two lakes. The one is the Sea of Galilee, Lake Galilee, okay, Gennesaret, it's got many names. Beautiful, fresh, clean water, teeming with fish, teeming. The fishermen have been fishing that lake for 3,000 years, and it's still full of fish because it's been managed properly. Then the water flows out of the bottom of Lake Galilee, and it goes all the way down to the bottom into the Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea is dead. There is nothing happening there. It is full of salt. You can go there and you cannot drown. <laughs> it's impossible to drown. The water is so dense, you just float. But there's no life, nothing. There's a good example. Life, because it flows in and it flows out. Then when it flows in, selfishness, you don't give anything to anybody, you look after yourself, you die. Folks, it's in giving that you receive. The, sea, the Lake of Galilee receives the Jordan River and it gives out the Jordan River. Now without that river, there's no Israel. The whole of Israel depends on that one river. We call him Jesus, don't we? the river of life, I want to say to you today, are you looking after that wellspring in your heart? Because that's where it flows from, see? The wellspring of your heart. All your, 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 your gifts that God has given you, all your abilities the Lord has given you comes from your heart, folks. Don't allow it to get muddied don't allow it like that uh, spring that was destroyed until my dear friend went down there and restored it. The cattle, they don't know any better. They just want more. They can smell water. They just want something to drink. But they, they stomp on it, around it, and eventually it's nothing. And you know what the spring does? The spring is very, very sensitive, folks. If you block a spring here, you've lost it. It'll come up again, but not even on your farm. It might come on come up about two or three kilometers away. That is how sensitive it, it is. People don't understand that. Without water, you can't farm. Without water, you can't grow food. And without food, you can't eat and you'll die. There's a spring right up in the north of Israel and it comes out of the ground and it flows. And obviously snow from Mount Hermon as well, but it flows into a river. That is the same river that Jesus Christ was baptized in by John the Baptist. It's the same river that I've baptized hundreds of people in that same river. It's deep, it's narrow, but it flows very fast. If that spring had to stop, there'd be no more Israel. I want to say to you that you need to look after the wellspring of your life. Because if that spring stops... You've got nothing left. We need to, how do we do that? Well, it's very simple. We spend time reading the Word of God. We spend time reading Christian books. We spend time with Christian friends. We spend time listening to Christian music. And we spend time looking after our physical bodies, eating the right food. Yes, we discipline ourselves, all of us. That is how it works. It's not a case of luck. There's no luck. We can't even determine what is luck. It's just a word. Blessing is different. God blesses us 
if we look after the wellspring of our lives. Now we've got a choice, folks, what we take in and what we read and what we watch. You know, uh, um, Hudson Taylor, James Hudson Taylor went to China and he went to China to preach the gospel to the Chinese. And he, uh, it was very tough at the beginning, very hard for him. But there was one young Chinese man gave his life to Christ. And James Hudson Taylor was so delighted. He had to go back to England to get more missionaries. And when he came back, he went to visit this young Chinese man. And he said to him, how is your spiritual life growing? He said, well, it's like I've got two dogs inside me, a black one and a white one. Yes, he said, and he says, you see, it depends which dog I am feeding the most. <laughs> okay, folks, I want to say to you, there's no doubt about it. If you are going to persist with pornography, you are going to kill the wellspring of your life. And the devil will make sure of that. I have heard that pornography needs deliverance. Like you need to be delivered from alcoholism or drug addiction. It's the same. Don't go there. I have never yet met an alcoholic when I've asked him a question. If you had to live your life again, would you drink any alcohol? He would say, I'll never touch the stuff. But he was lured into it, see? The same thing applies to drugs. I've met many people that take drugs. They are wonderful people, but they are, they are imprisoned. Yes, Jesus can deliver them. And he has, and I've seen it myself. But I want to tell you, it's not easy. Now, don't go there. Don't allow your spring to be muddied by and polluted, polluted by the things of this world, the cares of this world. Cast your cares upon Jesus because he cares for you. 1 Peter 5, 7. And then concentrate on strengthening that spring. Now, in South Africa, there's a place called Kurman. It's where Robert Moffat had his mission station in the early days. By the way, Robert Moffat's daughter married Dr. David Livingston, who discovered the Victoria Falls, but more importantly, was partly responsible for demolishing that horrific trade in human flesh called the slave trade. That same place, Kuruman, there's a, a spring. I've seen it. I was amazed. It's like a desert type area, very, very dry area. And then you see all these, this greenery and these trees. And then you see this bubbling spring. But folks, it is a big spring. It is massive. It comes out of the ground. Like almost like a waterfall, but coming out of the ground. Beautiful, clean, fresh water. You know what I love about a spring? A spring, now listen to this, is not dependent on the rainfall. Oh no, that water comes from deep down in the earth. Now if you are looking after the wellspring of your heart, you see, circumstances around you should not in any way damage that spring. Every day you're getting fresh manna from heaven, you're getting food, and you're getting drink. Even though all hell is breaking loose around you. And isn't that what's happening in the world today? Wherever you look, there's rumors of wars and wars and pestilence and violence and immorality. And you're saying, Angus, I don't know how we can exist. Stay close to the spring. Don't allow your heart to be polluted by negative talk and negative stuff that you're watching on television and, and um, on your social media. Keep the, the wellspring of your life pure and clean. And God will take you right through this until He calls you home to be with Him in heaven forever. I really want to encourage you to do that. You cannot run your life dependent on what's happening in the world with politics and, um, and, and the weather, etc. That wellspring continues to give beautiful, fresh water continually, irrespective of what happens. 
Okay? The uh, Jordan River has been running forever. And by the grace of God, it will continue to do so. Even though people try to tap it dry. Don't let people tap so much water from your wellspring that you can't replenish it. Because you know what will happen? You'll kill it. You really need to be selfish for yourself. You need to get up early in the morning like we all do. Well, hopefully you do as well. Four o'clock, that's me. And we need to give God the first the first fruits of our day before we go anywhere. That is the wellspring of your life. And then you can go out into the world and you can help others. Like my dear friend does who restores those springs that have been damaged. You can't restore a spring if your one is damaged. You can't help somebody else when you are the one who actually needs help. Now, the only way to overcome that is by spending time with the Lord and then going out and helping others. So I want to pray for you as we close. And I want to ask the Lord Jesus Christ to show you the areas in your life where you have allowed pollution to come in and pollute the wellspring of your heart where you're starting to watch stuff, your language too, speaking negative talk, okay, looking at um, things with an ungodly eye, spending company with people who are not Christians. I know, but I'm trying to witness to them. If they don't want to hear about Jesus, you cannot allow yourself to be polluted in order to win them over. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your word today which is a very simple word and which we read in the Bible. The Lord says that you have rejected my wellspring that I'm giving you freely and you have decided to fill your spiritual water into a broken container, a broken cistern, and it's just leaking out the bottom and it'll never ever fill. Lord, we repent of that today. And we ask you, Lord, to help us to drink of the wellspring of life so that we too, Lord, will have life-giving water to give those around us who are dying of thirst. Help us to preserve that which you've given us by looking after it daily. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, there we have it. I've prayed the prayer with you. You know what you have to do. Now you can go out and you can help others. Until next time, God bless you and goodbye.